come into your house to hear what you will speak to me. Through your Holy Spirit, open my heart that I may learn from your word to repent of my sins, to believe in Jesus Christ, and daily to be strengthened and upheld by this faith. Amen. spirit, 
for homes which supply shelter for us, gives us comfort, and offer hospitality. We give you thanks, O oh God. We worship you today on this first Sunday of the new year 2022. With hearts open and hearts that can forgive as freely as you have forgiven us. With joy for the gift of life, with music and prayers and thoughts and reflections. We give you thanks, O oh God. We worship you this morning of the new year and we worship you in our daily lives with deeds done in service of neighbors and strangers, with compassionate care for those who need us, with love for our family and friends distant or nearby, and with commitment to be good servants and stewards of the world. We worship you today, Almighty God, with grateful hearts and joyful spirit we give you thanks, O oh God. Amen. And the first reading today is from the Old Testament, about everything that has a time. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds, yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. I know that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken away from it. God has done this so that all should stand in awe before him. That which is already has been. That which is to be already is. And God seeks out what has gone by. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. I know it's unusual for the pianist to stand up and speak, but this is regarding the next hymn. The next hymn is number 800 in the blue hymnal, and it has an unusual kind of what we call phrasing or meter, and it has also a reference to a term which is very unusual and which you need to learn. It's called hemiola. Let me repeat, hemiola. Now that refers to a type of rhythmic or phrasing difference within a song. It normally means three against two or two against three. So when you sing this hymn, it will sound, I wouldn't say unusual, but just different than most of the traditional hymns we've sung before. So let me play it all the way through so you can get used to the phrasing. And remember the word hemiola, the three against two. Each morning brings us hymn number 800.
This Sunday is from the New Testament, Ephesians chapter 1. Please rise. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ. As a plan to the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also been obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will. So that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemptions as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. Let us confess our Christian faith together. We renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead, ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise and listen to the Holy Gospel written by Saint John in the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone who is coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but born of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and full of truth. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses, Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. The gospel that we have just listened to, the gospel on this Sunday, the first Sunday of 2022, is in fact one of the most beautiful pieces of gospel in our entire Bible. Listening to those words, the words from John, about the beginning, about the word and the light and the eternity, couldn't be a better way to begin a new year, 2022. It is not only about our beginning, it's not only about the beginning of a new year, it's not even about the beginning of the life of Jesus Christ, it's the beginning of everything. And it is so befitting and such a blessing that we can begin yet another year listening beautiful word. Those words that are so poetic, so philosophical, and so promising. They are filled with hope and grace and eternity, words that tell us that our world is indeed connected, dependent, and intertwined and blessed because it is willed by God. The beginning of this year, 2022, is put on a long string of so many days, so many months and years and decades and centuries, millenniums and eons that we still count and try to connect and understand. This year of ours, this year and age of ours, is not just floating around on itself. It's not an island of itself. It's connected past and also connected to the future. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was light. In the beginning was an intention. In the beginning was a will and a vision and a blessing. It is as equally poetic as it is written in the first chapter of the Old Testament too. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated light from darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called light. And there was evening, and there was morning on the first day. So this is the beginning of yet another year. But it is a beginning that has connections to our past, our distant past, and the very beginning of everything, and also is a prophecy and a vision to the time that will come. 
There is always light, if only we are brave enough to see it, if only we are brave enough to be it. These words are from the young poet Amanda Gorman, and they are equally beautiful. And they are also drawing from the wisdom of this beautiful Gospel of John. And when Amanda Gordon was giving this inaugural poem, The Hill We Climb, it was because she was testifying to light and to faith and to goodness. To the light that was in the beginning and still is, to the light that enlightened us and encourages us, the light that calls us to come into the day and to act and to be. The light that we believe and hope is always stronger than any darkness. So now on this few, first few steps that we have been taking into the new year of 2022, we welcome this year with yet another new poem of Amanda Gorman. If you haven't heard it yet, I encourage you to listen to it when she is reading it, but now I will read it to you. It's a new day's lyric. May this be the day we come together. Morning, we come to mend. Withered, we come to weather. Torn, we come to tend. Battered, we come to better. Tethered by the year of yearning, we are learning that though we weren't ready for this, we have been ready by it. We steadily now know that no matter how we are weighed down, we must always pave a way forward. This hope is our, and it is a door, our portal. Even if we never get back to normal, someday we can venture beyond it, to leave the known and take the first steps. So let us not return to what was normal, but reach toward what is next. What was cursed, we will cure. What was plagued, we will prove pure. When we tend to argue, we will try to agree. Those fortunes we foreswore, now the future we foresee. Where we weren't aware, we are now awake. Those moments we missed are now these moments that we make. The moments we meet and our hearts once all again beaten, now again beat. Come look up with kindness yet. For even solace can be sourced from sorrow. We remember, not just for the sake of yesterday, but to take on tomorrow. We heed this old spirit in a new day's lyric. In our hearts we hear it, for all lang syne, my dear, for all lang syne. Be bold, sang time this year, be bold, sang time. For when you honor yesterday, tomorrow ye will find. Know that we have thought need not be forgot nor for none. It defines us and binds us as one. Come over and join this day just begun. For whenever we come together, we will forever overcome. It is beautiful and it is breathtakingly beautiful. And I think it is drawing from the wisdom of the Gospel of John. It's drawing from the wisdom of faith and hope in light. And in that way, Amanda Gorman truly is a poem of our time and a poet of our time. Her words are passionate and compassionate. They are hopeful and heartfelt and bright and bold. And her poem is an action and a call to action for us to come on over, to come and be present and join this day that has just begun. Join this, join this year that has just begun. Because wherever we come together, we will forever overcome. Her poem, like our prayers this morning, are carried by the light of creation and all beginnings. That life was and is still indeed good. That darkness will never overcome the light. That goodness will always prevail. That life is always worthwhile living despite of everything that might despair us or disrupt us or disappoint us. As darkness will never and cannot never overcome light. That 
is what we believe and that is what we confess on this first Sunday of 2022. When we say the old words of the Apostle Creed together and when we're united in faith. And that is what we believe and what we pray on this first Sunday of 2022 when we pray the old beloved our Lord's Prayer together and we pray with faith. And that is what we believe and remember on this first Sunday of 2022 when we share communion together and share our faith in forgiveness and second chances. That is what we believe today and that is what we have always had faith in. That in the beginning was the Word, in the beginning was the light, and it still is. And we live in it and we live by it. But there's always light if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Or come on over and join this day just begun, for wherever we come together we will forever overcome. As we enter this new year of 2022, with all the struggles and everything unsolved and all the tension from last year, let this be our prayer today that we will move and mend, that we will cure whatever has been cursed, that we might come torn, but that we will try to tend, that we are better, but we will try to better, that we tend to argue, but we will try to agree, and we will look up with kindness and forever overcome, because the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. Happy New Year, God new door to everyone. Amen. Praise and an eternal glory be to you, our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who was and is and shall be one true God, praised from the beginning, now and forevermore. Our Father in heaven, thank you for life given to us, and help us to live each day in trust and faith and love. Our Holy Spirit, you make all things living, make us alive. So we give thanks for what we have received, the warmth of the sun, the food on the table, families and friends, and a place that we call home. Our Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for coming into the world as a word and as the light. We give thanks for our home and our country and for our daily well-being and democracy. Grant everyone with power and influence in our country to shape our laws and lives with right and light and justice and righteousness. Grant the president and the governor wisdom to choose and wisdom to lead. Bless our government and bless our country. Bless the Danish queen and her family too. We ask you today on this first Sunday of 2022, Please walk with us into our new days. We pray for the week to come and for all the people that we might meet on our path. Comfort the grieving, smile with the happy, and let us feel your presence and walk with your light. Amen. And once again, welcome to those of you who are sitting here in the pews worshiping and those who are watching from home worshiping together with us as well. Welcome into the new year of 2022. And we hope and we pray that this will be a promising, healthy year for this congregation where we can gather again together as we like to gather. After the service today, I encourage you to come into the hall and have a toast of champagne and greet the new year and have a few moments of good talk and fellowship together. Next Sunday, the 9th of January, there is service here at 11 o'clock, again followed by a light lunch. And at the end of January, we have our annual general meeting, the 30th of January. And if any of you in the congregation has any questions, any concerns, any suggestions to the council, please approach any of the council members or me and give us some suggestions and some input into where we are going and what we should be planning for the new year of 2022. Please rise. The grace of 
the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us. Let us turn to one another and wish each other a happy new year. Amen.
And we will celebrate communion together now, so I hope that you all have this little pre-prepared cup. And you can prepare yourself and loosen the lid for both the wafer and the juice, so you are prepared when I ask you to share it together. Let us pray. This is the joyful feast of unity and faith. Christ gathers his people around the earth to commune at this table. Across political lines and economic lines, in places of powerfully protected affluence and among the poorest of the poor, we share a meal, remembering and celebrating the one who proved peace possible. And so all of you come from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Come with your doubts, come with your fears, come with your anxieties and come with your faith. Come, for this is a table where all are invited and all are welcome. Please rise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took a bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat this. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. And then please take the wafer out and hold it up for a moment. This is the body of Christ. This is the blood of Christ. The crucified and risen Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, has now bestowed upon us his holy body and holy blood, which he gave for the remission of all of our sins. May he strengthen and preserve us all in true faith until eternal life. Peace be with all of you. Amen. And you may be seated and let us sing the communion hymn. Holy and compassionate God, 
In bread and wine you give us gifts that form us to be humble and yet courageous. May your words come to life in our serving and in our witness, that we might speak a living, loving voice of healing and justice to all of the world. Let us pray our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And please rise and receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you all peace. Amen. And you may be seated and let us sing the last hymn. Thank you to all of you who came and worshipped together with us here and there. And Happy New Year again to all of you. And I also want to say that we do read and notice all of the comments that our virtual congregants, they do send to us. The comments on the live stream and also all of the comments that I receive in text or in email. And I do appreciate it. And also, to all of you, please make comments, not during the service, afterwards, then it's fine. And uh, I would like to end with another prayer today. Uh, as I shared with you the beautiful poem of Amanda Gorman, there's a prayer that is equally beautiful and that is so befitting for this day. It is by the late Desmond Tutu, who was an icon and a beacon of faith and hope and humanity. And this is a prayer that he has shared with the world. And let us end our service with this prayer today. Let us pray. Disturb us, O oh Lord, when we are too well pleased with ourselves, when our dreams have come true because we dreamed too little, because we sailed too close to the shore. Disturb us, Lord, when with the abundance of things we possess, we have lost our thirst for the water of life. When having fallen in love with time, we have ceased to dream of eternity. And in our efforts to build a new earth, we have allowed our vision of heaven to grow dim. Steer us, O Lord, to dare more boldly, to venture into wider seas, where storms show thy mastery. 
where losing sight of land we shall find the stars. In the name of him who pushed back the horizon of our hopes and invited the brave to follow. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. And let us sit for a while and listen to the beautiful ode to life and the wonderful life that we do share played by worship. 